Let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 19 to 21. It's the Gospel for Tuesday of the 25th week in Ordinary Time. St. Luke writes, The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. That's from Luke chapter 8, verse 19 to 21. You know, there are many great books in the world. Among my own volumes, there is one that contains the works of Aristotle. I wish I had the time to work through it carefully and with reflection. His philosophical work in metaphysics and in ethics is timeless for its depth and acute analysis. But when all is said and done, the greatest depth of thought in terms of man's nature and end and that of the universe is expressed in sacred scripture. Further, it is marked by great simplicity there. This applies most of all, of course, to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Consider the gospel scene that I read earlier. Our Lord's mother and brethren arrived and wanted to see him. Christ's response to the news offers yet another example of the simplicity and depth of his teaching. He puts profound teaching, points which, which are of decisive importance for the entire direction of a person's life into simple and utterly accessible language. My brother and my brothers, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. His words also set forth in a wonderful one-liner what is uppermost in his mind and at the heart and soul of his revelation. Those who are closest to him, those who have most claim on his heart, those who most share his, li share his life, those who are foremost in the kingdom of God, are those who hear the word of God and act on it. Luke chapter 8 verse 19 to 21. There is nothing more important than this in the mind of Christ. Perhaps this brief response of our Lord served as a summary of what he had been teaching just then. It certainly summarises what he taught at great length through equally simple parables. In the Gospel text itself, this saying comes but a few sentences after his great parable of the sower sowing his seed. The climax of that parable is the seed falling on the good soil and bearing a harvest. That soil is the one who receives the word of God and bears its fruit through perseverance. Such a person, our Lord informs us, he counts to be his brother, sister and mother. I made mention of the philosopher Aristotle. He can be said to represent the entire philosophical tradition with its emphasis on analysis and understanding. The prophetic tradition, which gave voice to and preserved and represented divine revelation, emphasised hearing the word of God and putting it into practice. This holy tradition reached its height in Jesus of Nazareth, the word of God made flesh. The Christian who is formed in the mind of the church will gravitate towards Christ's mention of his mother among his brethren. His mother and brethren are those who hear the word of God and keep it. As the church teaches, Christ's mother is the mother and model of all who hear the word of God and keep it. Humanly speaking, it was she, accompanied by her holy spouse, Joseph, who first introduced him to the word of God in his very infancy. She brought him to the synagogue on the Sabbath, accompanied by Joseph, his foster father. He, the incarnate Son of God, had from his earliest days before him the purest and most perfect instance of the human response to the word of God. He himself in his human nature far outstripped her in all that pertained to God, 
for he was God made man, but we cannot adequately imagine the loving admiration he had for her. What mattered most to him, as our gospel text today makes clear, was the hearing of God's word and putting it into practice. We remember how the rich young man came before him asking what more he needed to do to gain eternal life. When in response to our Lord's answer he said that he had kept all God's commandments from his earliest days, our Lord looked on him with love. Our Lord loved him because he was good and obeyed God. How much more would Christ have loved and admired his own mother, his own mother, who from the beginning of her life had been sinless and filled with grace? She was the embodiment of all that our Lord meant to teach in his simple response to those who brought him the news of the arrival of his relatives. Let us make our gospel passage that I read earlier from Luke chapter 8 verse 19 to 21 the program of our life. Christ is our model for he heard the word of his heavenly father and put it into practice. He said on another occasion I always do what pleases him. Next to him though in holiness far below him was his perfectly sinless mother who has been given to us by him to be our mother and our model. Let us pray to the All-Holy Mary to lead us to be more and more like her Son.